Hello everyone. Today we're going to test the opto coupler. Now, opto coupler has an input side and an output side separated by light. This allows you to pass signals from one circuit to another with isolation. Now why would you want to do that? Well, let's say for instance we have a 24 volt input here but our output side is 5 volts. Now how do you connect a 24 volt signal such as a switch input or whatnot to a 5 volt circuit? You can't do it without destroying that 5 volt circuit 24 into a 5 volt circuit will destroy it. So, we take an opto coupler. We have our 24 volts here. We have our 5 volts here. And when we turn on that photodiode, those photons hit that photo transistor, drive it into saturation on the 5 volt side. Now, what else would you want to use an opto coupler for? aside from voltage conversion. You could isolate an extremely high voltage on the output side here with a low voltage on the input side. Where do you see that? Well, you see that in AC and DC drives, soft starts, motor soft starts, uh, and those types of units you'll have the control circuit over here on the low voltage side and you'll have for instance the insulated gate of an insulated gate bipolar transistor power module on the output side now why is that important well we've seen in the past where IGBTs explode they destroy themselves and that high voltage energy shoots back up through the gate of that insulated gate bipolar transistor power module and destroys everything connected to it. Well you don't want to lose your control of that circuitry when the IGBT explodes. If you didn't have this isolation here that explosion, that high voltage energy would shoot back up and destroy the control and if your control is destroyed there's hard telling what else could happen you might have something else connected to that control and if that control gave up the ghost then the control of the rest of the machinery might go haywire but what we've got to do we have to when we connect this to the circuit, and I've got a little test circuit I'll show you in a little bit. When we connect this to the circuit, this is an LED, there's current forward, that IF is for current forward, moves through the LED and causes it to emit photons. We can't put a voltage across here without a current limiting resistor. We have to limit that current through that LED with that current limiting resistor. Otherwise, we will have too much current through that LED and it will uh, dis be destroyed. So we have to limit the current. Now, with this particular device, this is a 4N35, that's the part number, made by Agilent Technologies. This data sheet states that the uh, current forward through the LED is 10 milliamps. Okay? So we need from that information uh, of 10 milliamps, we need to calculate the resistance to limit that current to 10 milliamps. Now this data sheet also says that the max 
forward voltage across that LED is 1.5 volts okay so let's move this out of the way and we'll look at some math it's real easy math don't worry this is the drawing of the test setup right here I get this backed up so you can see what we're doing here get the whole thing in the picture now from Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage law we could determine the value of the current limiting resistor here it is R1 we'll, I'm using a 12 volt DC power supply for the voltage source VS we're going to have a voltage drop across R1 we're going to have a voltage drop across the LED of the optocoupler that's your forward voltage drop VF and we're also going to have a voltage drop across this switch now when we close that switch we want 10 milliamps of current to flow through this circuit back to ground so we close the switch 10 milliamps flows through here through the optocoupler LED through the switch back to ground from Ohm's law we have current equals voltage divided by resistance through algebra we have resistance equals voltage divided by current we want to determine that resistance this is R1 here resistance equals voltage divided by current we can ignore the switch because it's going to be zero ohms hopefully it's going to be zero ohms if it's a good switch when we push that switch we're going to have zero volts across that switch so you can ignore that switch in this calculation to get VR1 we have to subtract VS from VLED to get VR1 and this is good this total equation up here is VR1 VR1 equals VS minus VLED now to get R1, we have to calculate in the current through that LED. So let's go down here. We have our source voltage of 12 volts DC minus 1.5 volts DC. That's the voltage across the optocoupler LED divided by 10 milliamps, the current through that LED. And that gives us R1 equals 1050 ohms. The closest standard value to that is 1 kilo ohm. Right there. Now on the output side, we're doing the same thing. I want 10 milliamps. This is an external relay. This is just going to show us that the optocoupler has been turned on when I push that switch. I want 10 milliamps through that LED. My LED is going to be green. Um, the voltage across the phototransistor, when the photons hit the base of that phototransistor, it's going to go into saturation. So it's going to be very close to zero volts across the collector and emitter here. There's going to be a voltage drop, but it's going to be so low that we can ignore it. So we do the same thing on this side. Voltage source minus voltage LED gives us voltage across R2. The current through it, I want 10 milliamps to light up that LED, is going to give us the same equation here. It's going to give us an R2 of 1 kilo ohms. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> that is awesome. 
Ohm's Law, Kirchhoff's Law, and you can determine the values of R1 and R2 in this circuit. Shortly, I'll show you the actual test that I've breadboarded using this circuit right here. And I'll leave this circuit up at the end of the video so you can take a screenshot of it showing the equations and the test circuit. Okay, now let's do the test. First off, there's my on-off switch right here. This right here, this resistor right here, is the current limiting resistor for the optocoupler's input LED. There's my green LED on the collector of the output of the optocoupler. And this right here is the current limiting resistor for this LED. Now when I push this button, the LED turns on. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So what's happening is, is when I push this button, it connects the cathode of the input LED inside the optocoupler to ground. The current limiting resistor here is on the anode side of that optocoupler's input LED. So when I push that button, the LED emits photons. The LED inside the optocoupler emits photons. And they drive into the base of the output transistor inside that optocoupler. And that drives that output transistor into saturation allowing current to flow from or through the current limiting resistor, the 1 kilo ohm current limiting resistor, through the green LED and through the output transistor inside that optocoupler back to ground. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So that's how you can test an optocoupler to see if it's working or not. Now you can also measure the voltages in this circuit if you want to. You could put your voltmeter across the input uh, optocoupler's LED, the input LED of that optocoupler. You could also, and, and when you turn it on, you can measure the voltage across that LED inside that optocoupler. And you can measure the collector uh, emitter voltage to see how close to uh, zero it gets, how, how close to zero volts it gets, if you want to. All kinds of things you could look at here. You could measure the voltage across the current limiting resistors. You could measure the voltage across this green LED. You could even, if you wanted to, measure the voltage that's across that uh, test switch I've got there. Nice. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll see you next time.